Joining me on the program right now, the national spokeswoman, we know what a woman is on this program, for MAGA Inc., our friend Caroline Levitt. How you doing? Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Andrew. I'm doing great until I just heard Pete Buttigieg's voice, so thanks so much for <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I'm sorry to have to do that to you. Um, but but you heard Secretary Buttigieg. If, if you evil conservatives would just stop it with trying to keep biological men out of the women's locker room, we could stop the train derailments tomorrow. And the way that he was talking to this reporter, who I don't know who that woman was, but she's definitely not an unbiased journalist. She threw up a softball question for him. Do you think the Republicans are too busy focusing on culture wars? We are busy ensuring that men can't compete against women in athletics. We are busy ensuring that men can't come into bathrooms. What type of lunatics are the Democrats that they want to live in a country where that is allowed? And then Pete Buttigieg presenting himself like he's some serious transportation secretary who has done good for our railroads and our infrastructure in this country. We've had more derailments under this administration than any other. Where was Pete in East Palestine? It took him a month to go visit the great people of that town after President Trump went and visited. He is a disgrace. Also, I must add, this is the same guy who took paternity leave. That's right, paternity leave for a child that he and his gay husband had. Now, I don't judge, whatever, but don't act like you're some serious lawmaker, secretary. Oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> well, I, you know, when when I remember before we had meme wars, right? The meme wars were kind of their infancy. About two years into Barack Obama's first term, you saw these these internet postings of George Bush waving and said, "Miss me yet?" Right? I, I think we're there with Donald Trump. It's like, do you miss me yet? When you look at the border, when you look at spending, when you look at inflation, food prices, gas prices, I mean, normal thinking people, I mean, are being are, are being wrestled into this idea that if a guy grows his hair long, puts on some earrings, and dominates in women's swimming, he's just, uh, excuse me, she's just like any other woman. It seems like every day the Democrats are throwing something up there that, you know, maybe maybe there were millions of voters that were tired of Donald Trump, or they didn't like, well, they heard Orange Man Bad had to go, right? He was he was rattling the nerves of the establishment and the media and, and, and some European allies. But if all of this stuff is making normal thinking people go, you know, 2018 wasn't so bad after all. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. And that's why the most recent polling says 75% of Americans, Republicans, Democrats, independents, apolitical voters, do not want to see Joe Biden run again for the presidency because normal thinking, everyday, hardworking, commonsensical Americans who just want to go to work and get a good paycheck and not give half of it back to the government or not be able to afford groceries or gasoline. They just want to live in peace and harmony. Their lives are being disrupted every single day by Joe Biden's disastrous far left socialist Democrat agenda. And you saw it with his announcement video, Andrew. I mean, he came out, didn't mention the word inflation, economy, border security, law and order once. There was 350 words in that announcement video. Not one time did he mention the issues that are hurting everyday Americans. But he did say MAGA Republicans a lot. He did say Donald Trump a lot. That is the only hope that they have to try and paint Republicans as this extremist party. Absolutely not. We want closed borders. We want secure communities. We want safe American cities to be great American cities again. We want low inflation. We want your wages to be up. Those are the things President Trump delivered on. The records between Biden and Trump could not be more clear. And that's why I firmly believe that jo President Trump's not just going to sweep this nomination, but he will sweep the floor with Joe Biden next November, too. Yeah, I mean, if it comes down to whose record is better, there's no debate, right? Right. Pre-COVID, you know, Trump presidency, I don't think there's been a better time since Ronald Reagan in the modern era of this country. Um, people that might have voted for Hillary Clinton were pleasantly surprised 
by the Trump presidency. The economy was on fire. Seven million jobs were created without government grants. That's the key thing. When Biden runs around, well, we created 12 million jobs. Well, if you just print a trillion dollars and hand it out, sure, you could have everybody painting rocks for the government. It's called Cuba. But when you look at the way the free market worked under Donald Trump, it created jobs, low-cost energy, food prices were down, and inflation was about 1.4 percent. We were taking it to the Chinese on trade and securing the border. All of that has been wiped away from what we see now. And I have to imagine that a lot of people deep down inside, even if they're not going to put you know, a MAGA sticker on their car, wear a MAGA hat, or like, you know, if push comes to shove, if the other guy's Trump, that's how I'm voting.